I have this file, vb.trojan.zip, and it was sent to me in an email allegedly containing some malware. I have extracted this archive, and there are a couple other directories that came from it, one subfolder called 1, the other called 2, and inside of both of these directories are seemingly the same contents. But they are photos of Lana Rhodes? Lena Rhodes? I don't know how to pronounce that one. Uh, granted, uh, that has its own affiliation and association, but in each of those directories, if we actually drill down into 1 and 2, these are not what they say they are. These aren't photos, and this single quote file is actually an executable. It is a Windows binary for x64, and it is an executable that we could dig into the very, very same in the second directory. If I run file on each of those, again, the exact same thing. This is ASCII text for our photos. And let's drill down into what these things are and see if we can make some sense of them. So let me go ahead and open up a text editor. We can dig into the photos that aren't photos whatsoever. In fact, it looks like it's Visual Basic script code. Now note the vb.trojan in the file name with a zip archive seemed like it was referring to, oh, maybe a Microsoft Defender or antivirus tag for what this malware could be or what it was. Now, digging into this code, this looks like, again, Visual Basic script, and I'm only saying that just genuinely based off of, okay, a single quote referring to a comment. And all these sig lines make me think this is supposed to be signed code, uh, but remember, all of the single quotes refer to comments in Visual Basic script, so all of this code here actually does nothing. And this file was massive. I don't know if we were able to take a look at it. It was like however many megabytes. There's a lot of this that is just genuinely fluff or nothing because it's all commented out. Every single one of these lines does nothing. It fills it and pads it with a whole lot of nonsense here, but none of these are going to do anything. I don't know what all those quotes or semicolons might mean in that case, but we could probably remove a whole lot of this. I do note that all of these KMS things are normally KMS for utilities that will try to activate Windows, the operating systems. Maybe this is just some auto KMS cheesy thing that could try to activate your Windows operating system. That would be kind of dumb and not that interesting. It, those are very boring to see. Now, if we kept scrolling, again, a lot of these are comments, but there is seemingly some data there. Like, if I kept cruising uh, okay, there is some nonsense, it seems like. They do try to create an actual object with WScript and do some other horrible things, but we could probably avoid all the comments. Let me just get another quick look at this because it seems like, at least at the very, very bottom, all of these SIG references, they might include, yeah, okay, a signature. So presumably this is signed code. They have put together an actual signature as a signed script or signed code to execute. That might be worthwhile to play with, but is an interesting observation. Anyway, let's try and remove everything that is a comment. Every single line that starts with, I'm using that caret or arrow symbol within regular expressions, starts with a single quote and then has any characters following it. Let's replace them all with nothing. I'll hit Control alt enter so that it replaces literally everything as part of the file. And note, there's a whole lot here that's just gonna go away now. I don't know what all these quotes are going to do. These semicolons don't seem to do anything. Really, maybe we could probably nerf those too. Let's look for any line that starts with a uh, colon and then any multiple occurrences of them. Again, let's replace them all with nothing. And now we can try to remove any line that is just a new line followed by a new line over and over again. We could probably kill that as well. Now it looks like we have the actual script. Granted, word wrap is on, and this is probably still massive, but ultimately it's 500 lines rather than the giant however many million thousands that we were looking at to begin with. Let's go ahead and save this as our second dot VBS. How about that? And maybe a little bit of a preview. I'd love to be able to chat about what we could use for dynamic analysis, not just static analysis. And with that, I'd love to introduce today's sponsor. And I'm so excited for this. I'm so happy they're finally with us. I'm so happy they're here. Please let me give some love to a tool I use all the time, AnyRun. AnyRun is a live and interactive dynamic malware sandbox, all within your browser. You can analyze threats instantly, download the latest detailed reports, and easily spin up the latest operating systems for testing, like Windows 10 or 11 in either 32-bit or 64-bit architecture. Got a sample of malware you want to see in action? Need to easily share findings with your colleagues or members of your team? You can choose the privacy setting of tasks, and you can customize just about every part of the sandbox. Between the starting directory of your malware sample, web browsers and applications installed, and even network proxies like Tor or VPN or other geolocations. 
I use AnyRun personally for quick and easy analysis to immediately see what a malware sample does on a live system. You've probably seen it all over my videos. It tracks open and running processes, network connections and DNS requests, and behavior heuristics to identify a sample. You can rapidly pull out a process graph, check indicators of compromise, view tradecraft with a MITRE attack matrix, and even generate a report or download a sample. Within just a few seconds, you have answers to your research. AnyRun is committed to make the process of malware research easy, fast, and efficient for specialists by simplifying their work. You can try AnyRun for free with my link below in the video description. Huge thanks to AnyRun for sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and save this as our second dot VBS. How about that? Now we have a bit more syntax highlighting and we can make sense as to what this really is. I'm assuming we're going to end up grabbing the namespace seven, which is uh, what, like the temporary directory, I think? It goes ahead and puts the script here with some permissions, I would assume this is that last argument. We go ahead and set this x254 variable to the letter I as a string. Let's go ahead and make that quick replacement because I'm assuming that's not going to be used anywhere else. And this symbol concatenate really just means, okay, we're going to end up creating a W script shell object. Now we have this giant date as variable that seemingly has uh, a lot of text to it, but it's just hexadecimal. And they end up replacing what looks like all these octothorps or hashtag or pound symbols with a zero and then reversing this value. So we could do this just as well, right? Let's go ahead and grab this entire payload. Let's go ahead and paste this in in. Let's replace every Octothorpe with a zero. Hit enter on that, and now we can try to reverse this nice and easy. Now it looks like we have another variable called DLL data, which is a bit interesting, a little bit telling, that uses string reverse on all of these lines that ultimately do concatenate with each other with the ampersand underscore to denote, okay, we're going to lead offer one line and then the next. Because word wrap is not on, but it is multiple lines as it's spanning across these. If I scroll down to the very, very bottom, what we could do is see how they end up manipulating these. They do do one other replace line and another okay, shellcode data that they build out here with another string reverse and replace this all together. Now, interesting, we have variables uh, call fixwow64, rom pepe pe <laughs> what is this? Well, this is pretty easy. We could go ahead and make the same modifications to those other variables like the DLL data or the shellcode data as we've done just a moment ago for date as, and we end up expanding the environment variable for win directory and then reg ASM, presumably to assemble something, and then rom pepe pepe pepe, uh, that is going to end up being a subroutine. So let's actually expand this uh, and actually add a little bit more indents here because that is something that we want to be pretty printed. We end up using some variables x66 and x77 to denote, okay, looks like other pieces of a string that we'll again use for simple concatenations, uh, and that will use dinwrap x.dll after we're pulling this in and making that a DLL, then we'll go ahead and use another set to create an object. We'll do in, inside of a do loop, define these. Call should work and end up registering a couple things with the dynamic wrapper X, okay, object that it's working with here. And then we use the shell code pointer and loop through each of these to be able to determine our shell code and do this over and over again for another for loop here. Fix wow 64 though is also another subroutine that they have created here. Uh, let's go take a look at what this is. They grab Juju, which is their W script shell, WMI object, grab the operating system type. If it is an x64 based PC, then they'll go ahead and use a 64 bit rendition of this W script. Interesting. Is that just to make sure that it has uh, w script capabilities with 64 bit functionality? That's kind of interesting. They have another function here, another subroutine actually put together um, that looks like it writes to a file with the adodb stream. They've done that, I've seen that before, right? To write to files. If the file name exists, then exit the subroutine. Okay, so if the file doesn't exist, then it writes date as to it. Interesting. So let's define that as force file contents. Presumably, that's probably not the right description since it ends up executing or exiting if it already exists. But very, very last function will end up grabbing a XML object, load XML for hello, node type value hex string, DOM data type bin dot hex, 
text EFG. So that's going to be the return value is going to be the node type. Is this just a simple like unhexlify value? That's pretty cool. I don't know that for sure, but they do end up using that force file contents function that we just saw with the DLL path and the unhexlify of our Solandra, uh, which is the modified and replaced DLL data. Now, I don't think we really need to cut up some of the other hex values for the shell code and the binary and the DLL that they're all cutting together because we can see how it's done. Uh, and that makes sense. Ultimately, I do want to go see, does the other file allow us to do the exact same thing? If we move into the to directory, working on the other photos, do we have uh, maybe something else just as crazy? Let me save this as, again, our other.vbs, and we'll try to clean it the same way we did removing others. I see the very same start as what we had before. Uh, let me try to remove all those comments as you saw previously. Looks like there are a couple values presumably put together for what would have been like an auto KMS software. Um, but I don't think that's really anything interesting. Uh, again, whatever auto KMS Windows licensing things is uh, their own thing. But this is the exact same syntax. We're now using date as with an exclamation point. Same exact variable setup here though. DLL data with at signs this time. And more random constants being created. Probably just to look like that auto KMS. Same exact function setup. Same exact variable names. Same exact fix wow 64 jhjh the text values that we all saw and then other functions maybe left over and like compromised for what would have been auto KMS. However, it's just this looks like real code compared to the nonsense that was the other sample ahead of it. That's odd to me that they have these defined separately in like different folders. How did these how did these come together? <laughs> So we have partially cleaned up one of the original Visual Basic script code here. Uh, I have no idea what we might be seeing in this single quote file uh, that is the executable, but let me see if we can work with our original second.vbs as the name of it in the one directory, and let's see if we could go ahead and actually give that to a sandbox to run it dynamically. Let's open up any run and let's try to create a new task where we can upload our second.vbs, what would be uh, the original photos of Lena Rhodes, and then we can go ahead and run this in Windows 11, 64 bits. Uh, let's give it a little bit more time. Private uh, is fine as anyone who has that link because it's basically private um, and let's go ahead and see this thing in action what it might do we are doing a little bit of in between here because we did some hand holding for it to know oh <laughs> why did you run it as a text file uh, okay well the benefit of being inside of any run is that we can manipulate and modify inside the sandbox so I'm gonna open up Explorer and let me go to my second dot VBS dot text and let me remove the file extension for dot text and that way I can run it as second dot VBS now I get to see just about everything the thing kicks off because WScript will run second dot VBS it ends up running itself again because it knows okay we need to be checking this in 64-bit mode and then it will do malicious things where it will drop the executables that we saw kick them off with reg server 32 work with reg and then do as it does uh kicking off with remcos remcos detected by memory dumps which is interesting connects to unusual ports reads environment variables checks the computer nodes uh, connections what are we connecting to are we doing anything sketchy yeah, we are going to some oddball IP address with regsm, and there's already a threat, looks like it kicking off within regular, um, uh, within any run tracking that down. What does this do? Let's go into some more of the more info on uh, our regsm that is starting up some other malicious activity. It's going to end up connecting to that strange host that we saw on 3090. Okay. Is that one of the default ports for Remcos? Other information we could see, uh, other behavior that it ends up doing, other reading of computer names, checking languages, trying to see what the victim might be. Well, that is our report from simply running it in the Any Run Sandbox. And one of the coolest things is that we can actually take a look at the configuration, like the config file, that it might have been able to extract out of that running sample. Hey, you've got some details between the mutex name, where it's actually storing things. I wonder if it put the logs.dat keylog file there um, in any screenshot path program files. Some of the defaults that it might be able to see or pull out for Remcos as the running malware there. That's pretty awesome. 
awesome. One thing I do want to note is that there was a recent bleeping computer article that was actually showcasing, I think, this exact same sample or something at least very, very similar to it. Uh, let me see if I can scroll down and find it. They got a lot of updates in the past day. Here's the one. Here's the one that I was thinking of. Hackers use fake OnlyFans pics to drop info stealing malware. Now remember, this all started with us as a photos of Lena Rhodes. Uh, again, adult entertainment star. Malware campaign is using fake OnlyFans content and adult lines to install remote access Trojan known as DC Rat. Now we did not see DC Rat. However, the stager that we got to dig into looks almost exactly like what they've covered and what Eason Tire was digging into. New campaign discovered uses zip files that contain a visual basic script loader that a victim is tricked into executing manually, thinking they're about to access premium OnlyFans collections. Now we didn't see the lure, we didn't see how this all got started, but we did get to dig into the visual basic script that has the exact same structure and setup as a shellcode underscore data, STR reverse, random things that end up being replaced out of it, and then it uses the OS architecture to spawn with WMI, hey, DIN wrap X, register the reg server to DLL, ultimately binary data is loaded into memory and injected into the reg ASM. They got to see DC rat that's freely available on GitHub, however, we just saw another access for Remcos. This article came out on June 19th, and truthfully, I received this email with the malicious sample in February. This is Friday, February 10th, where they reach out and they say, hey, I got this sample with a photos underscore celebrity name. Uh, a little bit of a pretense meant to be a JPEG file for anyone that doesn't have the Windows configuration that will end up using the file extensions like VBS. Apostrophe is a little bit odd. That was another hidden executable file, but... Uh, okay. Well, most of this is license error messages or filler auto KMS stuff. This is the attachment that they included. Subdirectories again, as we saw, one, another subfolder for number two for the photos of that celebrity, so to speak. Anyway, I thought that was pretty neat. Maybe try to have some real world, very current events, tie-ins. Again, apparently this has been kicking around since January of 2023. Makes sense to see some stuff even as early as February. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. Hope you had a little bit of fun and please do take a look at our sponsor. Honestly, that is what made this so, so easy and quick to be able to go diagnose and see what the heck are we up against for that malware sample. Take a look at any run. Hope you enjoy. See you in the next video.